The 2019 NBA Finals will continue. And in this vein, I don't know how much more we can take. What a night in Toronto. Kevin Durant returned from injury, and after more than a month away, he was brilliant for about 12 minutes before he re-injured his calf and walked off, presumably, for the duration of the series. A devastating moment for the Warriors, potentially, but they kept playing. Kawhi Leonard had a tough shooting night for most of the game, then got hot late with 10 straight Raptor points as they took the lead late. But the Warriors had some splashing left in and back-to-back -back threes by Steph Curry, then Clay Thompson, part of a game-ending 9-2 run. Curry with 31, Thompson with 26 on the night. Raptors had the ball in their hands with a chance to win it. Warriors got it out of Kawhi's hands, and Kyle Lowry's buzzer beating three was not close and so the Warriors live to play a game six back on their home floor the Raptors will have to travel and play at least one more game if they're going to win their first NBA championship what a night here from Scotiabank Arena that's Grant Hill Steve Smith Zeke Isaiah Thomas I'm Matt Weiner good to have you with us uh, what do you what are your thoughts I mean it was just a lot to unpack there that we didn't show you but I mean, it, it was a great game. I mean, Kevin Durant coming back at the start, getting off to 12 points, setting the tone, raising the tempo, and not only raising the tempo, but the confidence for the Warriors. Then, at the end of the game, what I saw is Draymond Green make an unbelievable defensive play. And the defensive play, when he stopped Gasol, right, didn't let, didn't let, didn't let the pass come down to Gasol for two points, then closed out on, La on Lowry, blocked a shot. When you talk about a defensive sequence in terms of intelligence, patience, stop the ball, close out, I mean, it was just picture perfect. I mean, I it was beautiful to watch it. Yeah, Isaiah Grant, I mean, so much to this game. We start off, like you said, with Kevin Durant, and unfortunately for him, he got hurt. But then you see Cousins come in for a flurry, really just took over the basketball game, and then Kawhi in that fourth quarter. But it still comes down to those two guys they call the oh, Splash Brothers. Yep. You're talking oh, about hitting. My. We were walking to come out of here. It was 103, 100. And next thing you know, Grant, you said, the Warriors are up three. And I don't know what happened. <laughs> we didn't get a chance to see it. So that's how quick they can knock down some threes and erase a deficit of three points to go up three just that quick on two shots. You know, guys, we talked before the game, and we were just hoping with Kevin Durant coming back. And obviously, we, we feel for him and the organization, him being out. We were hoping for a great game. You know, I think we got a great game indeed, and, and you're right. I mean, when Kawhi went on that 10-0 run, you kind of thought, okay, the game was over, and Golden State showed just a lot of toughness, a lot of grit. I On that last possession, you talk about that closeout with Draymond. I thought Andre coming over to help on the yes, drive, yes. forcing Kawhi Leonard to swing it, and then Draymond getting out from Gasol and contesting on that three-point line. That was just championship basketball right there. Getting a stop. You can't diagram this. You just got to scramble. Great contest there at the end. Look who's on the floor. You got guys that have speed, have yeah. quickness, who understand how to play. And, and that last possession, to me, really symbolized the last three minutes of the game on the defensive end, as we're talking about Isaiah. I mean, Draymond very easily could have made a mistake yeah. and gave up a basket. What he did on Gasol by closing down the middle, not letting Gasol get the layup, and then as the ball was in the air, most players move after the pass. Draymond moves when the ball is in the air. What, what, I mean, this is just beautiful defense. We get a stop here. Okay, now he holds Gasol, falls in the air, he moves, close out, takes up the space. I mean, you cannot teach that any better, and you cannot execute it any better than that last defensive sequence. That he had. And I said to add to this, Marcus Saul did everything to try to hold him, yes. try to seal him, and he just kept fighting to get around. And also before that, Draymond, a couple plays before that, he had a big three to get them close. And he was smiling. The confidence of guys that have been there before yeah. just yep. shown tonight. And, and it also just seemed like, and obviously, you know, this team is, you know, playing for a championship and, and had championships in years past, the Gold State Warriors. But almost like when Durant went down, almost felt like like they want to win it for him yeah. like you know like they're playing for him not that they weren't necessarily a word before but it just like they weren't going to lose because they appreciated him getting out here and going through that 
and that's just devastating for them and, and they feel for their teammate uh, to have to go through that. We don't know what it is. It, it doesn't look good, but just to come out and get this win with their with their guy going down. Well, just impressive. Well, it impressive. certainly appeared like a recurrence of the right calf injury, although he really reaches down more toward his Achilles area. Uh, same area, if nothing else. And that was with 9.46 to go in the second quarter. They led by five points when KD walked off. Uh, the Warriors actually managed to outscore the Raptors by one the rest of that second quarter. And I thought that was as impressive as anything we saw tonight. Their response to KD walking off because with all the other injuries piling up, Kavon Looney left this game tonight not to return. They had to deal with Iguodala's injury. They had to deal with Clay Thompson missing a game. It just keeps piling up and they just keep finding ways to stay in it. Well, th this is what you love about Kevin Durant, and this is what we love as, as athletes. And all of us have had serious, you know, almost career-ending injuries where you had to make the decision, do you risk it all to win the basketball game or do you save yourself? And the respect that and love that the Warriors show Kevin Durant because he risked it all to win the basketball game. And we don't know what's going to happen, you know, with his, with what type of injury it is. But clearly, he, he put it all on the line tonight. And that's what we respect. That's what we appreciate. And that's what we love. And that, unfortunately, that's what you want to see in your heroes. That's what you want to see in your gladiator player, so to speak. You want to see them risk it all. And he put it all on the line tonight to win the basketball game. And even though he got injured, his teammates responded. See the appreciation there from Dwayne Wade. It's also a reminder that what we see out here in warm-ups warm is different than playing in a game, right? He looks great in warm-ups. Yeah. You never know when an injury like that is going to pop. And if you watch some of the video, it literally popped. Here's Steve Kerr after uh, what had to have been an exhausting win here in Toronto. First question on back right on three. Uh, Steve, uh, Dennis O'Donnell, KPIX San Francisco. Um, can you describe your range of emotions right now from winning the game, but also losing KD and Kavon once again? Um, I don't think that I can, honestly. I just told the team I didn't know what to say because, um, you know, on the one hand, I'm so proud of them. <clears throat> uh, just the amazing heart and grit that they showed. And on the other, I'm just devastated for, for Kevin. And so it's a, it's, it's a bizarre uh, feeling that we all have right now. Um, an incredible win and um, a horrible loss um, at the same time. Arash, over on the left side here. Steve, to your left, Arash Madain with Sportsnet. How many times have you seen the Stephen Clay show just take over a game and deliver when it's all on the line? Um, I've been here five years, so uh, I don't know. 100 plus games times five years. I've seen it an awful lot. Doesn't happen every night, but it seems to happen most nights. Uh, they're amazing. They're amazing competitors, great shooters. Um, Mark Jackson said it years ago. They're the best shooting backcourt of all time. And um, <clears throat> but maybe what people don't know is is how competitive they are. And I thought I thought that showed tonight. Mark in the front. Mark Medina Bear in his group. We obviously got some of the information regarding Kevin and Kavan with his injuries, but are there any is there any new information to report as well? I believe Bob Myers is going to come in and, and speak uh, on the health front. Uh, I don't really know much. Um, Bob was back there uh, during the game. He'll have more information. Go ahead. Anthony Slater with The Athletic. Is there any regrets uh, about bringing Kevin back into the series now that, with what happened? Again, I'm going to leave that to Bob. Right over here, Dan. S Steve, Dan Wanky with the Los Angeles Times. It looked like DeMarcus was not going to be in the rotation tonight, and then Kevin gets hurt. How critical were those four minutes from DeMarcus and kind of getting everybody back into the game after such a shocking thing. Yeah, I thought DeMarcus was um, fantastic tonight. You know, he stayed ready. Um, he didn't get the first call. Um, 
you know, for that second quarter run. We went to Bogut, and, um, and then with the injury, we, we knew we needed his scoring, and, and he, he stayed ready and, and played a, a brilliant game. So uh, very happy for him, and, and um, he's, uh, you know, he, he's been through an awful lot himself uh, over the last year plus with, uh, with his own injuries. So this was a great night for, for him individually, and, and um, very happy for him. Again, over here in the same row. Steve Brandon Hurley with the Carroll Times Herald. Kawhi Leonard had a huge stretch in that fourth quarter. He took over the game. They regained the lead, the Raptors did, and the crowd was going crazy. You guys could have folded, but you guys regained the lead and then pulled it out. How, were you, how do you think your guys were able to do that and overcome that? I think we went down six, if I'm not mistaken. And um, maybe it was five. I don't remember. Was it five, six? Uh, but uh, Steph and Clay hit back-to-back -back threes, I believe, um, and we got stops. You know, our, our defense was uh, bending down the stretch, but we didn't break. And uh, the last stop was uh, tremendous, amazing defense on that last play from all five guys. Draymond's block, uh, he covered so much ground uh, on Kyle's uh, shot from the corner. Uh, <clears throat> so our guys just stayed with it, and they stayed poised. and. Just an amazing job finishing the game. We will hear from Bob Myers uh, in a little while when he reaches the podium here at Scotiabank Arena in Toronto. Lots of heroes to discuss for the Warriors tonight. Just heard Steve Kerr uh, address that Draymond Green defensive play. DeMarcus Cousins' minutes off the bench when it looked like he might not even go to him were remarkable. But sometimes, especially in this day and age, it comes down to three-point shooting, and the Warriors hit 20 of them tonight. Uh, compared to eight for the Raptors. They were 36 points better from the three-point line tonight, shooting 20 of 42, and that was obviously a huge difference for a team that hasn't been able to produce points in the paint in this series. It was. I mean, the way they shot the basketball was just fantastic. Isaiah, you said it best. I thought because of Kevin Durant on the floor, you got cleaner looks from Clay and Steph because you can't leave, and that's the spacing when you start talking about a guy like Kevin Durant. But I, I was just watching the stat sheet not to get but three points from the Warriors, not to really get to the free throw line. It really came down to them shooting yeah. that three ball yeah. and the Splash Brothers really making their mark again in this game five. Not, not only, you know, you have to, you know, I guess be impressed by how well they shoot the basketball, but I'm equally impressed at how well they're able to get open from the three point line in crucial situations to get open looks. I mean, you're talking about moving without the basketball and understanding how and where to get a shot from that three-point line. And you know Toronto is one of the best defensive teams in the league. Everybody's conscious of them shooting the three ball, but yet those guys get open time and time again at the three-point line. 20 made three, second most in finals history. I, I love that point, Isaiah, because it speaks to, uh, it speaks to uh, Stephen Clay's ability to move without the basketball. It speaks to the awareness on second chance points finding the three-point shooters. And on that shot where Klay Thompson put him up three, 106-103, he was wide open. Wide open. Yeah. And so the screen setting, yes. Draymond Green and, and Andre Iguodala and, and Cousins setting screens for their guys. So it's a collective effort. But 23 pointers, you're supposed to win. Yeah. Yes. When yes. that happens, <laughs> and, and certainly they did. And Duran hit three of those in three chances. I mean, it's uh, you guys would know better than me, but it, it strikes me as just amazing the way he came out and shot the ball after more than a month away. But the other point I want to get to for, for guys who are out there with other great players, how much did his presence early in the game help them get into that rhythm and get those shots off? Well, I think of I think of two things. One, Isaiah talked about it's important at the start of the game for Golden State to get off to a good start, which they yeah. did. Yeah, and Hit they their got first off to five. a great start. And I think in part because you had a Duran out there, you know, you have to guard him. Even he came down the court, he wasn't even in the offense. You have to put a body out there. Now it spaces the floor. It's a different defensive attack when Durant's out there. And he hit three threes in the first quarter. And so it kind of reminded I me, mean, you know, I don't want to compare it to legends versus, or legends versus legends, but it reminded me a little bit of Willis Reed where he just gave him a little bit of an emotional lift, a confidence lift, and they were able to continue to ride that with him being hurt there. And so his presence was felt, was needed, was important. And, and help them get off to that great start. You know what? Uh, what and, and my, what I saw is that he grabbed he grabbed the mind share of the Raptors mm -hmm. and the mind share 
from the arena in terms of energy. Mm -hmm. All of the energy and focus was on Durant, which I think let everybody else on the Warriors team kind of breathe and say, oh, okay, we're free. And then when he came out and made a couple of shots, then it just loosened everything else up. But I think the energy of the building and the energy of the Raptors were strictly focused on Durant, which I think let everybody else kind of get a feel good about themselves that carried over into the fourth quarter. And I think also Isaiah, the two threes that he hit, they didn't play bad defense, but they turned their head for one second. One and second. because of his able to shoot the ball, they're able to shoot it, and also his height, you can't recover on a guy like right. Kevin Durant. And then also he hit those two, then he walked into one and knocked yeah. down another three. Then he had a block shot, a big block shot, we're saying, where he got a block shot. So his presence was there, and then I think it also loosened everything up for staying Cl Stephen Clay. And, and the shots that he made, you know, Smitty, you know, sometimes you, you hit a shot and the shot talks, right? And he made shots that kind of said, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so that was shit. to the whole arena. I mean, yeah, yes. to the whole, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. it's, it's some shots you, you, you shoot and, and it talks, mm -hmm. right? He made shots and he was telling the arena, basically, shut up, yeah. I'm here. You know, let's let's like go that. win this thing, and and it was it was impressive to watch. I, I will say, watching the way he was shooting, the way he was going, he was going for a big night tonight. Oh, he was going to have a big, yeah. night. A big, big, big night. Well, we were here for the warm up, and the crowd had a lot to say when he yeah. came out, and he had a lot to say back when <laughs> right. the game started. Uh, but he is uh, done. It appears for the series, you would certainly have to think so. But the Warriors still have life. They're Ooh. celebrating in Oakland tonight. Oracle is not done yet one more game the final game at oracle arena coming up in game six meanwhile they'll have to wait for at least one more at jurassic park and here in downtown toronto ontario clay thompson scheduled to appear here on the post game show when we come back <laughs>